What is going on, everybody? And in this video, we're providing you a state of the market and stock picks for January 12th, 2023. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as we do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day and the week ahead in this glorious market. So today was an interesting day. We started to continue the climb today, uh, which was a little bit more than expected. It was pretty choppy for the majority of the day. Then we kind of pushed up during that last uh, little bit during the last back half of the day. Uh, ultimately, we are going into core tomorrow. We also do have uh, TCM reporting first thing in the morning uh, for semiconductors. So that'll be important for chips uh, and how they play. Uh, we've already gotten a lot of bad news on chips. So it'd be interesting to see how TCM does report tomorrow. Uh, but let's not forget the core. The core is going to be extremely, extremely uh, important. It, even though my focus is shifted off of core, it is still going to be uh, a very, a very pivotal event. It's still going to have weight until essentially inflation is back down to normal. So roughly around that 2%. Again, we are sitting at about uh, 7.1 right now. So uh, what the consensus is for tomorrow or what is being forecasted is roughly around 6.7. So they're still looking for a pretty big drop in inflation tomorrow. Uh, this is headline inflation. Uh, you have to un understand that, um, you know, they take the important pieces of inflation out. And something I've talked about when it comes to food and when it comes to uh, rental units and Powell has made comments about he's. they have noticed that the rental units have gone up. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it's not going to stop them from driving up rates. So core tomorrow, what are we looking for? Tomorrow, we, if we hover roughly around um, expectations, uh, I could see that as being a real positive. Uh, we are still continuing uh, to decrease uh, or slowly uh, drive off inflation. Again, we are still very far from inflation. And this is why Powell has made comments about unpopular uh, opinion being uh, that rates will come down because that is not the case. Uh, I think whatever does occur here, unless it's dramatically uh, drop from 6.7, maybe low sixes, potentially even fives. Uh, the market is going to rip people's faces off <laughs> if that happens uh, because people see good things and potentially uh, a sooner pivot for Powell. That is one uh, particular option. Now, again, if we do hover around 6.7, that's great, but that still means that uh, the Fed is going to raise rates, which may be concerning if we hover around expectation. Now, uh, the one thing we do not want is to us to start climbing back up. We start climbing back into the high or mid sevens, uh, potentially even eight. You're going to draw massive panic. So tomorrow is a very pivotal day and a very big event nonetheless uh, with the core because a lot of people are expecting uh, this pivot and that everything should be lining up and nothing should be out of whack. Uh, again, People are going off of data that's already been manipulated into believing that everything is going to be okay. Uh, because again, you're trying to drive uh, the masses from uh, utter panic. Because when there's panic, uh, people just don't think logically and then it's harder to control uh, the masses when nobody is thinking logically. Uh, so there has to be some sort of, um, not to say that misinformation is good, but uh, uh, when it comes to uh, the market, the U.S. Uh, economy as a whole, you don't want everybody to be in a state of panic. So with that being said, again, if everything was in panic, nothing would be, uh, you couldn't get anything done. And so that's why you're seeing what you're getting out of the administration and media and everything else. Yes, they have an agenda to drive to try to calm uh, the public. And they've done a pretty bad job, in my opinion. But nonetheless, uh, so again, we definitely do not want this thing climbing back higher. If it does, it will reset the clock. My my focus will go back onto inflation and in knowing that the consumer will pretty much be done at that point. Uh, the consumer right now is essentially in a pressure cooker right now. 
and we are trying to see how far we can push that consumer before he breaks. And um, it is it is not going to whether either it's inflation shooting right back up and restarting the clock, or these rates continue uh, to be hammered down our throats. Uh, one or the other is going to um, cause the consumer to fold, and a lot of consumers. You're going to lose a lot of people. There's going to be a lot more saturation of housing, of used cars, of all these uh, essentially uh, these these needs and desires that people were buying two years ago with free money, uh, Rolexes, nice cars, all these things. Uh, there, people are starting to sell these things, and there's many of articles out there that uh, it's just not a good investment. People are trying to liquidate um, uh, these these. Uh, things that aren't necessities as, uh, you know, credit cards have been creeping up uh, because people are just trying to pay for rent and groceries uh, at, the, at the current moment and understand what it does uh, just to the real estate industry in itself. Uh, a lot of real estate agents are getting hammered as well, uh, especially because of the rates that are going on. Uh, you know, what they could have been making, uh, you know, 10 grand a month last year, uh, potentially at this time, and now they're lucky to make a thousand dollars a month. So just because of uh, the rates and the way and the way they fall right now, uh, things just aren't looking great. And again, we're waiting for that, that final hair on the camel's back for this whole thing to break. You know, when will it come? Again, it's not saying that a rally cannot happen if inflation does continue to come back down. We could get a very nice rip. We have to understand that bank earnings are right around the corner as well on Friday. Um, but if inflation, I think inflation, a really good inflation report could override whatever happens on Friday. I think people will look the opposite way that, oh, that's great. We already know things are bad. But um, that will only last for so long. If we do get a rally, I think it's only going to be short lived. But that's not saying we can't pop 100 points. 200 points, 300 points, uh, just off of the fact that inflation, uh, we may have seen peak inflation at 9.1, and, and people will celebrate that because hopium is extremely potent in a market in which uh, everything is just absolutely bad and absurd. People want positive news. Uh, so with that being said, um, again, very key level to watch tomorrow, depending on what goes on. If we cannot, if we get a good report or we hover around 6.7, around expectation, and we need to still break 4K. If we can't break 4K, that's going to be an issue going into Friday because then you have the banks, and the banks have already said a lot of bad things. It doesn't mean that they can't uh, do well on Friday, uh, but then that just means in Q2, things could be potentially even worse when we report uh, Q1 earnings. So obviously there's things going on, still massive layoffs. Uh, stocks are pumping because of layoffs. Uh, yeah, good in the short term. Yeah, you uh, save some expenses, but your production is going to suffer because you are laying off so many people. Now, even given uh, innovation, innovation and AI are helping a lot. Robotics are helping a lot more than you think. A lot, there's been a lot of things, uh, people that are starting to replace, being replaced by these things. And so that's something else to understand as we are transitioning into a very new environment in general to a gig economy um, and understand that that's what we're doing. And it's uh, it's the pandemic kind of forced the hand. And now you're seeing a lot of it being forced even further with uh, people not being able to um, get, to have a job because inflation is just too high for uh, businesses to uh, have a lot of overhead. And so with that being said, uh, SPX 4K is going to be extremely important tomorrow. Um, again, even if we could blow past that, we're at the 39.69. Uh, we could even blow past it. There is a top here roughly uh, close to that 4,100. Again, we've been moving about 100-point increments on index. Uh, we break up to one 100-point range, and then we float around there. Then we break up to another. And we fall down about two ranges, so seems about right for 2022. Uh, but we'll see. This is 23, 23, just starting out. Uh, again, expectations are high. It's a new year. Hopium still very potent, uh, but Powell has not changed anything yet. 
Uh, so we'll see how core is tomorrow. Again, that's at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, that will come out pre-market. Uh, so you're going to get, tomorrow's going to be very volatile. You'll get a lot of movement tomorrow. So that uh, will be interesting to watch. Nonetheless, uh, Bitcoin, uh, is there a point to even go over Bitcoin? Bitcoin is going to be the same. Uh, just based off what's going on with the markets, you are hitting a top here, um, this 18K400 uh, mark. So we need to see if this does hold. Again, everything's lining up for what's to roll out tomorrow with the core. And then we'll go after that. Again, something I've always talked about, uh, bulls, you want this thing to break back below 102. Bears, you want this back over 105 and continuing to make a new high. Uh, so, again, there's been a lot of consolidation, uh, which is definitely not good for the bulls because – or, yeah, the bulls because the bears look like they might have another big breakout here uh, coming shortly on the dollar. So that's some things you keep in mind. Uh, Tesla, again, massive consolidation area. Um, it's really interesting to watch here. Right under the 20 EMA, this thing is really been kind of floating between the, uh, the 20 EMA monthly and the 50 EMA monthly and so we've been kind of pinched in between there um again i think tesla being the one of the number one stocks out there one of the best companies out there uh this thing is is just waiting for a, a pivot uh it's not saying it can't sell off uh by god inflation start increasing tomorrow you're going to see the death attack tomorrow uh <laughs> leading into monetary policy um and then not to say that value in banks, something I've been talking about for a full quarter already, uh, they have been just going parabolic. Um, everybody's thinking value, value, value. Tech is not where the money's at, and that's great, but you shouldn't be buying when these things have been parabolic for a full quarter. Uh, that just means they're going to come crashing down. Let them reset before you enter positions. Um, Again, not financial advice, but a lot of these things haven't reset yet. And so the if there is going to be a move to the downside, it is going to be big and mighty coming from value and coming from financials because that's where the meat of uh, the move is. So um, Apple, again, still holding uh, fairly strong um, for the most part. Again, we'll see what they do on earnings. Earnings is on the 2nd of February, so that first week of February is going to be a big earnings week. The last week of January is going to be a big earnings week, uh, but we're going to have to see. We're going to start out with uh, Netflix and then um, and then have Tesla going into some some really big earnings and some really um, interesting forwarding guidance going into 2023. Again, I'm not, I'm not expecting anything pretty. Even if they do beat, I, ex I expect expectations to be really bad. And we've seen even on beats that uh, if expectations, if they say the wrong thing, uh, things could get hit pretty bad. Again, uh, the market is becoming very numb. So you need a little bit more of a catalyst at this point uh, to be able to sink this thing down even further. Uh, something I've been talking about. But again, if inflation runs away, it resets that clock and the fear comes back. So we'll have to see there. Uh, BA. Yeah, again, very overextended. Uh, this new top we're trying to break is the 213 mark. Uh, haven't done any touchbacks. This thing's just been absolutely parabolic, and this is what I'm saying. This is not something you buy in the top and think value is going to continue to scream up. Uh, this thing's been very overextended uh, for a couple quarter for full quarters here, and um, it's going to come crashing down. It took a while to get up. didn't take that long. To go up, it's had some pretty parabolic moves, but when it comes down, it's going to come down quick. So just be um, mindful of that. Uh, again, the, the key is to always wait and be patient for it to pull back and then get in at that point. JPM has been doing that that song and dance the whole time. It looks like it's going for a new, just broke out today. Uh, that 139 looks like it's going to make a new, a new high in this current rally. Uh, so we'll have to see if this does again break down. Um, you have some solid support here at the 132, um, but if there is really bad news, bad core, uh, this thing is going to slam straight through this, and then you're going to have a huge drop here uh, if that is the case. Golden Sachs, uh, again, trying to make a new high here. It's starting to struggle. we we'll see how we open tomorrow. Again, it really depends on core, really depends on earnings, and see what happens there. So, again, that's on the 17th. That's uh, so Golden Sachs will be next week. Uh, Bank of America is on Friday. Uh, this thing hasn't quite recovered after the comments that were made. And so 
uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. But Bank of America is uh, really interesting here going into um, going into Friday. So with all that being said, uh, this video doesn't need to be too long. Again, uh, I try to emphasize more on what the possibilities could be from the report. Again, it's not what you think. It's how the market's going to digest it. And something I've always stated uh, is... Um, you know, the report could be good and the market just sells off. Um, sometimes sometimes it's, it's just not making sense. A lot of the reverse uh, thinking that things will are bad and the market rips. There's massive job cuts and then the stock rips. Uh, when in doubt, it's, it's going to really hinder growth uh, in, in the future, in the short-term future and potentially the long-term future. Again, unless innovation is involved, uh, which is a strong possibility. We, we can recover quicker, but uh, in the midterm, you're still going to have a lot of issues until you get to that other, the other side, until a lot of these companies um, make that jump or that leap, whether it's with AI or whatever the case is, to try to uh, over, overcome any massive cuts uh, to departments that they currently have. So... With that being said, I do appreciate you making this far. You can go ahead and drop a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.